We can't hear you. We can't hear you, Ben. Can you show me? Yeah. It's okay by me, anything. <laughs> Because this internet, according to here, is not secure and it doesn't like insecure internet for some reason. Yesterday was fine. I cannot read English words but it doesn't come. <laughs> ah. No, it's so small. I have this because I have a big tire. It's okay, but I can buy that for me. Today, uh, the title is Love for the Father and Service is Tiedam. Hindi is much better. We should like Hindi better than English. No? Did you want Hindi? Ma or Seva Se, Sune. Yeah, he promised you that he got you down here. Really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, Dada, so we got to be who said he was going to be a little bit. Hare, but yeah, Apni, 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 Himat, Utsa, say, Agi, Bhakti, Jari, Himat. हिम्मत भी सब में है, उमंग उत्साह भी सब में है। हर एक के अंदर एक ही श्रेष्ठ संकल्प भी है कि हमें बाप दादा के का बाप दादा की समीप रतन, मुरे रतन, दिल तक नशीन तिलाराम के प्यारे Banahi, is that right? <laughs> no, I mean, is that what you want? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Lakshabi, Sabika, 
Today, Bhaktada was seeing a deep love of effort of all of you children. Each one of you children <clears throat> continues to move forward on the basis of your own courage and zeal and enthusiasm. Everyone has courage. Everyone also has zeal and enthusiasm. Each and every one of you also has the one elevated thought. I definitely have to become a close jewel, the jewel of the eyes. I have to become seated on the heart throne and loved by the comforter of hearts. All of you also have the aim of becoming complete. The sound from the hearts of all the children is the same. In return for love, we have to become equal, the same, and complete. And in line with this aim, you are all successful in moving forward. If any of you are asked, what do you want? Deep question, what do you want? Do you know what you want? No, not what it says in Murli. What do you actually want? No, no, think deep. Deep, 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 deeper than that. Deep. No, 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 this is just guessing game. What do you really want? Well, you need time to think what you really want because one thing is to try and answer the question according to the teacher, which is not very interesting. Another thing is to find out what do you actually really want? Do you know what you want? No, 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 listen. You're all operating on, on a surface. Right now. Go deep. Deep into your heart. Have you ever gone deep into your heart? If you do this, you will be successful in Raja Yoga. You have to go deep. Stay on the surface, not very interesting. If you're on the surface, you have too many storms of Maya. Go deep. Come. And you go to the still part of the ocean that is undisturbed. Seva or Baba. Make a deep job, deep job. Know yourself, the recognition of the soul. So if any of you are asked what you want, the enthusiastic sound that comes from you is I definitely have to become complete and total. <clears throat> but that I was pleased to see everyone's zeal and enthusiasm and their elevated aim. <clears throat> he gives all of you children thanks for having zeal and enthusiasm and following one direction for, for how you are moving along or flying with the one father in one direction with the one aim of going to the one home and the one kingdom. One father. Shall we go? No, because the mic is disobedient. The black, the tablet is very obedient. <laughs> One father and so many worthy yogi children. 
will be like as a Sindhi word, which does not really mean worthy, it means competent. Are you competent yogis? Think about your competence. Each one of you is moving forward with more specialities than the next one. Through the whole cycle, there will never be such a father or such children who never have anything lacking in their zeal and enthusiasm. Such children who are filled with specialities and loss and the love for God. This is not possible at any other time. You have to value it this time, a very important time. This is why Bhaktada is proud of such children, and the children are also proud of such a father. Wherever one looks, all of you have this one special sound in your heart. That is Baba and service. Okay. To the extent that you love the Father, you also love service just as much. In each one's Brahmin life, love for both is the donation of life. Don't get to life. The basis of being constantly busy in those makes you a conqueror. Of Maya. <clears throat> All the children's plans of zeal and enthusiasm for service reach Baba of Dada from everywhere. All the plans are the best of all. According to the drama, the method with which you have expanded so much from the beginning would be said to be the best of all. So this is from 1985. In 1983, Om Shanti Bhavan was built and they began the Universal Peace Conferences. And there was three or four or five, I don't remember how many. And there were very big VIPs coming there from the UN, from different uh, ambassadors, uh, Dalai Lama, you have come, uh, big gurus, uh, the highest VIPs in BKs used to come at that time. Now, um, Mr. Modi is coming, and the VIPs from India, but not so much VIPs from outside India. At that time, it was from outside India. Many years of service of Brahmins becoming victorious jewels and jewels of success have now passed. You have reached the Golden Jubilee. Golden Jubilee means 50 years of BK service, 1985. Why are you celebrating the Golden Jubilee? Are you celebrating according to the custom of the world? Or, according to the time, are you celebrating it with enthusiasm to give the message to the world at a fast speed? Everywhere, you are creating facilities to awaken sleeping souls with a loud sound. <clears throat> so from 1981, we had computers. Before that, not. <clears throat> and internet started pretty strongly around that time. Many people nowadays, they never even born without internet. They don't know what is life without internet. At that time it was just coming, so it was possible, because of internet, to do something in all places at the same time. This was new, so this is what Baba wanted. Everybody should hear the same message at the same time. 
Now we think it's normal for everybody to listen to the same murli at the same time. At that time, it was a big deal. Wherever they listen, wherever they look, let them hear this one sound echoing everywhere. According to the time, we are now receiving the beautiful message of the good news of the beautiful period, the golden age, of the beautiful age that is to come. Through this golden jubilee, you are making preparations to give the special notice or message of the golden age that is to come. Let the sound of such a wave that the golden age is about to come, let the sound now spread everywhere. Let the scene be visible everywhere just like the morning sun rising after the darkness. The rising sun spreads the good news of light everywhere. You forget the darkness and you come into the light. For hearing the news of sorrow and peacelessness all the time, souls of the world have become very much afraid of destruction. Nowadays, we don't tell people destruction is coming, they tell us. Ah, we just want to know if those who are on Zoom can hear properly. Can you tell us? Yes, I can't. Not properly. There are several people online. Can you hear us? Yeah, you yes. can hear, but not Everybody properly. Can you hear us okay? Give us a sign. Well, I will continue. Can you check one second? Mm -hmm. <coughs> can you check one second? Hello? Can you tell us if you are able to hear us? Yes, yes we can. can. Okay, very good. They can hear us. Excellent. That's fine. So I think you can leave the speakers as they are. Yes. Okay, in the Golden Jubilee, give souls of the world the experience of the sun of pure hopes rising. Just as there is the wave of destruction, in the same way, spread the wave everywhere of the good news of the establishment of the golden aged world. Let the star of this hope sparkle in everyone's heart. Instead of asking what will happen, what will happen, let them understand this is what will happen. Spread such a wave. The Golden Jubilee is the means of giving the good news of the Golden Age coming. Your children constantly and naturally have the awareness of the Golden Age, even while seeing the world of sorrow. The awareness of the land of happiness makes you forget the land of sorrow. You are totally absorbed in making preparations for going to the land of happiness and the world of peace. Nirvana, I won't say land of peace because there's no land over there. <laughs> Dham. Dham is a sacred place, but there's no land, just a dimension of light. You have to go home and then come to the land of happiness. The awareness of going and coming is making you powerful and also making you instruments for service with happiness. People have now heard a lot of sad news 
And now with this good news, make preparations to go happily from the land of sorrow to the land of happiness. You know, one day someone asked Daddy Golzar, uh, how do you go to the golden age? And she said, it's very simple. You close your eyes and open them again, and then you're there. Because when you die, you close your eyes, right? And after you're dead, there's no time. You just go to the soul world where there is no time and no space. And then you get born, open your eyes, and there you are in the golden age. Is that pretty good, right? But don't worry about anything. Let the waves spread in others that they too have to go. Give hope to those who have no hope. Give good news to disheartened souls. Make such a plan that in the special newsletters or whatever means there are for spreading the sound, let the one message of the good news reach everyone at the same time. Now you do easily on the internet. One message reaches everyone all at the same time. At the moment you send it, within a second they receive it, anywhere in the world. In 1985 you could hardly imagine such a thing, but Baba was getting us ready. From wherever anyone comes, everyone should know of this one thing. With such a message, let there be the same sound everywhere. You also have to bring about newness. Baba was all the time asking BKs to do something new. And BKs were always doing old things. Because if you do something new, People will worry, is it okay, because we're not used to it. So they feel more secure with old things. Still Baba wants new things. But if you want to introduce something new, you will get a lot of opposition. Just keep going with the new thing and you'll get through. You have to reveal your knowledgeful form. At present, people think that you are peaceful souls. Right? We have the Universal Peace Conference, so everybody thought BKs are good for peace. They didn't think much about what is a BK knowledge. So they know that you are peaceful souls and you are the ones who will show them the easy path to peace. This form has been revealed and is being revealed. However, let there now be the sound. This alone is the knowledge of the knowledgeful father. For example, now they say that this alone is the place for peace. Now let the sound emerge from everyone's lips that if there is any true knowledge, it is this. just as they experience the powers of peace and love in the same way that truth be revealed. Right, so how well do you know the gyan? And how well are you able to explain it to people so they get it that this is not the same old, same old stuff that everybody's saying? This is the challenge. There will not be any need to say anything. So how will you now reveal the power of truth? What method should you adopt so that you don't have to say anything? So that they themselves say, this proves that if there is true knowledge, if there is God's knowledge, if there is powerful knowledge, this is it. Baba will tell you the method for this 
another time. There were several murders where Papa said, I'll tell you later. He never did. Mm -hmm. He will. All of you must also think about this. Papa will then tell you about it next time. The field of love and peace has been created. The seed of knowledge now has to be sown. For only then will they claim a right to the inheritance of heaven as the fruit of knowledge. They so go to heaven through knowledge, not through peace and love. Peace and love is okay, but you need the knowledge. Bob Dada continues to hear and to see everything about the heart-to-heart -heart conversations that you have. You sit with love and you think about things too. You use your head very well. At least you are churning to eat the butter. You are now churning for the golden jubilee. Only nourishing butter will emerge. There is a good wave in everyone's heart and these waves of enthusiasm in your hearts make the atmosphere powerful. As the atmosphere is created, so the attraction for coming close increases in souls. The wave of we should now go and see is continuing to spread. That means people are hearing about from Kumaris. And they say, let's go check, check out what is going on there. At first, they used to think, I don't know what they have. They say it is good and we should go and see that place. Eventually, they will then say, this is it. The zeal and enthusiasm in your hearts is now creating zeal and enthusiasm in them. Your hearts are now dancing whereas their feet have only just begun to walk. Here, when someone is dancing very well, the feet, even of those sitting at a distance, begin to tap. The atmosphere of such zeal and enthusiasm is beginning to make the feet of men dance. Acha. To those who constantly experience themselves to be souls who have a right to the golden world. You have a right to the golden world. To those who have constant zeal and enthusiasm to make their stage golden aged. Do you have that? To those who are constantly merciful. Are you merciful? What is the meaning of merciful? It's that you feel motivated to benefit other people. Is it merciful? To those who remain lost in love, are you lost in love? <laughs> for showing all souls the path to the golden age. Means do you have love for God, but do you have love for humanity? Two things are important. It's a sign of a Brahmin, love for God and love for humanity. Have you got that? It's your motivation. To those who constantly put every golden version, every word of Baba's, into their practical lives. Are you doing that? To such souls seated on Babdada's heart throne. Are you sitting on my chair or on Baba's heart? to the victorious jewels, are you victorious jewels? Who are always merged in love to such souls, Bhaktada's love, remembrance and namaste. 
Now again, Bhaktada meeting Brijinder Dadi. You know Brijinder Dadi? This is Brahma Baba's daughter-in-law. Anybody met, met her? Gita Ben met her. So. Baba's daughter-in-law. One of our Vijay Shamane, he took the class. So the one making everyone move is making you move. Every second, Bharavanhar makes you an instrument and makes you do everything. The key is in the hands of Karavanhar and you are moving along with that key. You receive the key automatically and you experience detachment and love as you walk and move around. Even though you may be settling karmic accounts, not a physical illness, settling karmic accounts, by seeing the karmic accounts as a detached observer, you remain in pleasure with that companion. It is like that, isn't it? You are in pleasure with the companion and you are seeing as a detached observer how these karmic accounts are getting settled. Because of being in pleasure, the settlement of karma feels like nothing. While those who have been instruments for establishment from the beginning are here, whether they are sitting or moving along, whether they are on the stage or at home, the Mahavir children are always in their elevated stage of service. They are on a double stage. One stage is being in their own elevated stage. And the other is being on the stage of service. In the building or on the stage, are you sitting on a bed, on a couch, or are you on the stage? No matter where you may be, you are on the stage of service. It is a double stage. This is what you experience, is it not? Look at your accounts as a detached observer. Whatever you have done through the body in the past, see it as a detached observer and how all that is getting settled. This is not called suffering of karma. There is sorrow in suffering. So you would not say that this is suffering because there is no feeling of pain or sorrow. It is not suffering of karma for all of you. With the power of karma yoga, this has become a means for doing service. This is not suffering of karma, but it is a plan for service. Even the suffering has changed into a plan for service. It is like this, isn't it? And this is why you always experience the pleasure of constant company. From birth, your desire has been to stay together. So Brijindra Gadi's got married to Brahma Baba's son because she wanted to live in Brahma Baba's house. Not because she was interested in his son in particular, but she was interested in Brahma Baba. Because when you get married, you get married to the whole family. Right? So that was her way to be with Brahma Baba. And that was before he became Brahma Baba. He was always very attractive, um, powerful, 
man. So this desire was fulfilled on the path of devotion, before Gyan, and on the path of knowledge. It was fulfilled in the corporeal form, and it is now being fulfilled in the avyat form. So this desire from birth has become like a blessing, Acha. The extent to which you experience the company of Sakar Baba, no one else has that much experience. And because when the BKs moved from uh, Hyderabad to Karachi, there was a court order saying that Brahma Baba and the BKs could not meet. And so they met with Mama. Anybody who surrendered, they didn't surrender to Baba, they surrendered to Mama. But because she is his daughter-in-law, she could live in the house where he lived. But all the others had to live in other houses and they would see Baba occasionally. Because of the court order, they were not supposed to meet. And so Baba would come suddenly and unexpectedly and they would meet briefly and then he would go away again. So they only really lived with Brahma Baba when they moved to Abu from 1951. So you received a special part of staying with Baba. This is not a small thing. Everyone's fortune is their own. And you too can say, Vareme, the wonder of me. The original jewels are always instruments, as son shows father. You are a divine mirror that reveals the father's character through your every act. A mirror is essential to give a vision of yourself or of others, because you, you reflect it in the mirror. So all of you are mirrors to grant a vision of the Father. What does everyone remember when they see the special instrument souls? You remember Bhaktada. What the Father used to do, how he used to walk. You remember all that, don't you? So you are the mirrors to reveal the Father. Abdada always enables such special children to stay ahead of himself. He makes you the crowns on his head. You are the sparkling jewels on the crown of his head. So you put your child on your head, right? And you're proud of your child and show your child like this. So now Bhaktada meeting Jagdish Bhai. So Jagdish Bhai was the main writer. And so Baba used to call him Sanjay. Because you know the Bhagavad Gita? And Gita, whatever was Krishna saying to Arjuna, Sanjay was telling it to Dhritarashtra and his wife and whoever was around. So the Gita, is the only scripture where God talking to someone was witnessed by someone else. In all other religions, God talks to somebody but nobody saw, there's no proof. But in this, Sanjay saw and reported. So, this is different. Did you know that? You knew it, but did you get it? And so this is why this is called the actual Gita in Maurice, right? And so Sanjay, the one who is writing down what Shri Baba is telling to Brahma Baba and the BKs in language that the regular public could understand, so Baba gave him the name Sanjay. So meeting Jagdish by using all the specialities you have received from the father as a blessing, 
you constantly continue to progress. It is good. What did Sanjay do? He gave drishti to everyone, didn't he? You are giving the drishti of knowledge. What is Divya drishti? One is vision and the other is the eye that can understand. So this is divine drishti. Knowledge is divine, isn't it? The drishti of knowledge is the most powerful. It is also a blessing. How else would everyone receive, with, how else would everyone know about the knowledge of such a big world university? Very few listen to it, but through the literature, it becomes clear. This is also a blessing you have received. This is a speciality of a special soul. The speciality of every organization is revealed through all the facilities. For instance, through lectures and seminars, through literature, pictures, whatever facilities there are, they are all a means of revealing the specialities of the organization or the world university. This is also an arrow. Just as an arrow brings a bird, when you shoot a bird down, the arrow brings the bird down. In the same way, this is an arrow that brings souls close. This is also the part you have received in the drama. To teach by his part to be Sanjay. People raise many questions. Huh? They say, how do you know this is really God? Can you answer? People will come and ask you, okay, how do you know? How do you know your result? What's the proof? What proof is you don't say that you say my body? No, 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 but uh, that's not going to work. You have to give proof. As in the court of law, we have to give evidence. So you have to collect up the evidence and provide the evidence to the people who are asking so that you can prove this is good. And I'm a soul. And the cycle is 5,000 years identically repeating. Can you prove it? There's one very good way to prove the 5,000 year cycle, you know? And that is population growth because Baba gives you the beginning population of the world is 900,000 and the end is whatever it is, 8 billion, whatever, but it takes 5,000 years for the population to go from this much to this much. It's the best proof. But you may say that it's more than that. You know what? Since I've been alive, the world population has doubled. So, you know, it happens in 20 years, not 30 years. So, not, not an issue. Because it's a Jacob. So, people raise many questions. And so, it is necessary to have a means of clarifying the answers to the questions that people have. Right, yesterday we had question answer, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they were asking me many questions. I don't know if anything got proved, but at least we had a go. For instance, you can tell them everything personally, one-on-one, -on -one, 
but this literature is also a good method. This too is essential. You can see how Father Brahma created this method with so much interest from the beginning. Day and night, he himself used to sit and write. You know Brahma Baba's look at name is Likraj. Means king of writers. So he used to make cards and give them to all of you, didn't he? You used to decorate them with jewels. So he also demonstrated this, did he not? This is also a good method. The charters that you draw up as a follow-up to the conferences are also essential. So this we used to do during that time. We used to make a charter and all the people who came to the conference, they would sign this charter and then they would send the charter to the UN or whatever. And we will do this and that. So some means is definitely essential for the follow-up. This, <clears throat> so you had a charter for the first Universal Peace Conference, a different charter for the second one, a different one for the third one, and so on. So when you have a Universal Peace Conference every year, people take you seriously. So from this, people would understand that this world university is run very systematically. You know, because the BK Center used to be like three people in a tiny little hut. And they would call that the World Spiritual University. And people would say, where is the university? <laughs> we can't see it. So to prove a university, you need books, you need library, you need conferences, you need you know, PhDs and whatnot, courses. <clears throat> so this is a good method. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> When you make effort, it is filled with power. Will you now make plans for the golden jubilee and we will then celebrate? However many plans you make, so much power will be filled in them. Success is guaranteed with everyone's cooperation and everyone's thoughts filled with zeal and enthusiasm. You simply have to repeat it. Everyone is now thinking a lot. Thanks. <clears throat> At first, it seems like a big task, but then it becomes easy. So easy success is guaranteed. Success is written on each one's forehead. Have a look at your forehead. Success. And have other meeting groups. Are all of you double light? Do not make yourselves heavy in any situation. You get heavy? The situation comes. <laughs> because so it's all the game. So don't make yourselves heavy in any situation. When you always remain double light, the days of happiness of the confluence age, the days of spiritual pleasure will be spent in a worthwhile way. <clears throat> what will happen if you take upon yourself the slightest burden? What will happen? Will you have confusion or pleasure? Do we have confusion or pleasure? If you take a burden. If there's heaviness, there's confusion. If there's lightness, there's pleasure. You enjoy. So each day of the confluence age is so valuable. It is so great. 
It is the time to earn such a huge income. Are you making lots of income? You're working on it, no. Thank you. Piles and piles. It is time to earn such a huge income. Good income from yoga. A lot of yoga, a lot of income. <clears throat> so continue to use this time for earning in a worthwhile way. Worthwhile way means profitable. So, to understand all the secrets, Raz Yukt, and who are Yuk Yukt, constantly experience the flying stage. So don't take anything too seriously. Is that okay? So it's essential because things will present themselves as very serious, but it's only a game, so don't worry about it. So stay in remembrance a lot and go ahead in studying and in doing service. You are not those who are going to stop. Don't let anything stop you. Plenty of things will come along and try. But, you know, they put a big stone in your way, so you either go around it or over the top. No use trying to break it down. There's too much hard work. <clears throat> so let the study and the one teaching you always be with you. Souls who understand all the secrets and are yogyukt are always ahead. Whatever signals you receive from the Father, continue to move ahead in that way together. Catch the specialities and dharma of special souls who have become instruments and follow them and continue to move ahead. Right? Never worry about anything. <coughs> right? <coughs> Why do people worry? Because they think they're responsible. Who is responsible? Oh. You're not responsible. You do your best. It sometimes works, sometimes doesn't work, doesn't matter. <laughs> Don't worry. You can't control anything anyway. So. The closer you are to the father, the closer you are to the family. If you are not close to the family, you can't be threaded in the rosary. So, you know, Sahaj Yoga doesn't mean easy yoga, because it's not easy. Sahaj Yoga means yoga in the context of people. That's the thing. As compared with the sannyasis who do yoga by themselves. Okay, the blessing is, may you be filled with willpower. <clears throat> and use all the powers you have received in this final birth. This sweet drama is predestined in a very good way, and no one can change it. However, in this elevated Brahmin birth of the drama, you have received many powers. The Father has willed you them, and so you have willpower. Use this power whenever you want. Become detached from the bondage of your body and stabilize in the karma teat stage. I am detached. I am a master. I am a soul who has been made an instrument by the Father. Stabilize your mind and intellect in this awareness and you will be said to be filled with willpower. And the slogan is, do service from your heart. Is your heart open? Nobody with broken heart, frozen heart, messed up heart. 
fix your heart and then service from the heart. And the door to blessings will open. Because they have to have a generous heart, yeah? An easy heart. Om Shanti. So there's a reminder of the third Sunday of the month, which I already mentioned. Yeah. Did you like that? So from 1985 till 2019, very much has happened in between. So anybody have any questions? Any clarification you want? Anyone on Zoom have any questions, any clarifications, any things you'd like to share? So you mentioned another day, the Murli is like Gita, so this is what you explained today, like Baba explained to um, this knowledge is said to be the real Gita. You've all read the Gita, yes? Properly? From A to Z? Yeah. In Sanskrit? In Hindi? In your local language? The problem with the Gita is it's written by lots of different people, not by Vyas or whoever is supposed to have written. And so it's full of contradictions. And this is what makes it a problem. And you find that all the scriptures of all the religions are full of contradictions. So you don't know, is it this or is it that? And the Gita means God speaks. So Shri Baba says, I am God. Krishna is not God. Krishna is the first birth of Brahma Baba. Brahma Baba is the last birth of Krishna. So that's kind of interesting, eh? Because the deities, where are they? Deities are immortal, right? So they should be around somewhere. But you can't find them. So where are they? They take birth, they take rebirth, <clears throat> and then they become ordinary people. And you don't know who you are, right? And Baba pulls you and says, okay, you took 84 births. And you say, yes. Why not? <laughs> so he says, okay, in your 84 births, 21 of them, or at least 20 of them, was as a deity. And then you became ordinary human. And now you have to become deity again, because you used to be. So in order to become deity again, you need some serious work, because we are antiques. <laughs> you have to be fixed. So we have the deities are completely virtuous, right? All the virtues, completely viceless. Mariata Purushottam, completely non-violent. Parma Dharma, Ahimsa Parma Dharma. So you have to have all of these characteristics. <coughs> so Jeet Baba sits in the chariot of Brahma Baba's body and he talks and Sanjay listens because he is clairaudient and clairvoyant. You know these words? Clairaudient and clairvoyant? <laughs> it means you can see what's going on very far away. So if you have, you know, like a drone or something, you can do that. But you can also do it if you have special yoga cities. So anyway, Sanjay watched 
she fell on talking through Brahma Baba and wrote it. What's going on? So that's Jack Beach Bai. So she Baba speaks through Brahma Baba and he says all the knowledge. And so the knowledge is one one above, which means we have to develop the capacity to perceive the mind of God with your mind. Not so easy. And you have to know yourself as a soul. You have to become free from all the vices. And really learn the philosophy of karma and yoga. So this is what Baba is teaching us. But in the Gita, it's not uh, possible to apply it because um, a number of points are incorrect in the Gita. And um, the Gita never actually says that Krishna is the god of the Gita. Doesn't say that. But what they did about 200 years ago, when the uh, East India Company started to control India, and it, you know, there was the, um, they were in, in Calcutta and they were in different parts and in that time there was Aurangzeb and then his son was not very good and so they could mess him up quite well and anyway gradually they became military and they control everything and the Hindus are non-violent so the pundits were a little bit worried that what can we do to deal with this problem that we're coming under the influence of this company. And <clears throat> so they put the picture of Krishna on the Gita. And this began about 200 years ago. And from that, the people deduced that Krishna is the god of the Gita. Why they wanted to show that is because Krishna had his Vatarshan Chakra and it was a weapon. And in the Mahabharata, they have pretty good weapons. And so this was a yukti to get Hindus to resist. Otherwise, they were not resisting properly. So from this idea came the idea that Krishna is a god of the Gita. So it's quite a recent idea, only 200 years old. But people forget you know, what, what it was 300 years ago. But if you read the Gita, the description of God corresponds more to Shiva than to Krishna in terms of the epithets that are given. And so it's actually, you have to cl clarify that Shiva is the god of the Gita and that the chariot is not, you know, a military carriage with horses, but a human body. And the horses are the five senses. And so Brahma Baba gives his body to Shiva Baba and he follows his instructions. So Shiva Baba becomes the driver of Brahma Baba's life. And he also speaks. And so this is what he does. And then uh, how Baba proves all these things is by pointing to the memorials. So the different temples that exist throughout India are memorials of what God did and also different BKs, these goddesses, what they did. And then he points out to Dilbara temple being just a couple of miles away from Madhavan with these. Have you seen Dilbara temple? So it shows the yogis who are white open eyes with this diamond in the heart doing kapasya. 
and so this is a memorial of Madhubani. Then there is also Gaumuk. So on the Shiva temple, you have the Shiva Lingam with this the thing around it with the water, milk, honey, yogurt, lots of different things they put. And then it goes and goes all around the temple and it comes outside the temple, they put the cow's mouth, right? Cow's head. And water comes there and the devotees take it there. So this is a memorial that she Baba comes in Brahma Baba's brain or somewhere and gives him all the knowledge and it goes around his head, so he turns it and it comes out of his mouth. And the cows are the sisters, because they're the ones who keep on telling the gyan, right? But in every Shiva temple, you also have a bull. So all the different gods of India, they have a vehicle that they ride. <clears throat> so the vehicle corresponds to the way that you function. So Saraswati has a swan. So she functions by these characteristics of a swan, which is that you can tell the difference between milk and water. And you can separate it. Have you ever tried separating milk and water? It's symbolic. The milk means truth. So the milk is the knowledge that comes from Baba. And if you churn milk, what you get? You separate into buttermilk and butter, and then you make ghee and so on and so forth. But milk and water, when they're mixed together, water is ordinary thoughts. And if you churn ordinary thoughts, all you get is tired. You churn milk, you get butter. So you need to distinguish which thoughts come from God and which thoughts come from people and separate them. So this you do by studying the Murli deep. That's why I keep saying, go deep, go deep, go deep. You can go deep. You're not used to it. Make your brains work a bit. Otherwise, you use your brain for the house and the shopping and this and that, and grandchildren and whatnot. It's very superficial stuff. <laughs> Easy. But make your brain work deep, because this is time now. So, uh, the Gita is given in the, on the battlefield. So, you are on the battlefield. You have to fight your attachments because you have to give up everything and dispossess yourself from everything. So you can't do that easily, a little bit at a time, really slowly. And also the main thing, you have to destroy the ego. So the last bit of the um, Gita is all about finished your attachments. <clears throat> so you're attached to people, to places, to things. So the mantra Baba gives is you have to uh, forget your body, your bodily religion, that means culture. How many people can forget their culture? Practically impossible, but he requires that. And then your uh, bodily relatives, and become by yourself, and then go to God. That's the Gita. But by reading that Gita, they can't do it because they think Krishna. So you cannot forget your body and remember somebody who has a body. You have to remember Shiva Baba because he doesn't have a body. And only as a soul can you be on the same level as Shiva Baba, you're bodyless and he's also bodyless. So then you can have yoga like that, you see? So in this way. So I'm um, in preparing a book at this time, it's not ready yet, but 
word by word comparing the Murli with the second chapter of the Gita. I'm doing only second chapter of the Gita. The Gita is very dense. So if you do the whole thing, it takes a hundred years. And in, very interesting in the Gita, it says, don't bother with the Vedas. Because that's for people who are not very clever. Interesting, huh? Very few people notice that point, but I notice I said, that's interesting. The Baba sometimes says in the Murali that the Gita is the mother of all the scriptures, the sheer money, the jewel. Because all other scriptures of all other religions and all the Hindu scriptures, they're all derived from the Gita. And the Gita was written down by some people, lots of different people, and they added and subtracted and this and that um, from the Copper Age. Because when the Copper Age came, there was a destruction there. Small destruction, not particularly small, but it's called small destruction. And so the same circumstances were there as in the big destruction. So people that spontaneously remember God. So there's a spiritual law that says you can only remember God in trouble, sorrow. So if you don't have enough sorrow, you won't remember God. But this is why Maya comes along, give you trouble, so you can remember God. Is that okay? <laughs> Many people think, oh, you know, I can't remember Baba because of this and because of that. No, because of that, you do remember God. If everything was nice and easy, you don't remember God. So you need trouble, double trouble. You have trouble from the BKs, trouble from the Lokiks, trouble from the government, trouble from the body, trouble from everywhere. Especially so you can remember Baba more. Huh? No, but it stimulates you to remember Baba. Because if your trouble is not bad enough, you won't remember Baba properly. So you need really bad trouble. Sorry. good <laughs> No, you only remember Baba in bad days. We do, but that's that's like ultimate. Now we have to remember. That's the that's point. Now, that's yeah. exactly the point. Yeah. You see them, but everybody likes to have everything should be nice and easy. But Baba says, no, you don't need nice and easy. That's for golden age, nice and easy. You don't remember Baba that time. You only remember, it's like it's a law of spirituality which people do not like. And they say, oh no, Baba, not at all. We will remember you in happiness. He says, try. <laughs> <laughs> Show me. The character of Kunti in Gita, you know, when Lord Krishna asked her what boon should I give you, he said, give me suffering so I can remember you. Ah, see? Mm -hmm. There it is. So it's very interesting. And it does not correspond to what people think it should be. It's always some different thing. Because Ji Baba is not a human. And it's very difficult for a human to conceive of someone who's not a human, higher than human. Right? Quite difficult. You can think of what's lower than a human. And he said, you used to be deities, so you have to think about that. The deities are still human. The God is not human. So you, a human being, your father is a non-human. That's very interesting, huh? We never thought about that. The father of humans is a non-human. 
Your mother is an angel, Brahma Baba. So you're not exactly totally human. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah. Your father is non-human. Your mother is angel. What are you? You're not human anymore. Sorry, finish. <laughs> <laughs> you're something different. So these, I'm telling you these things because you haven't thought about them before. So you need some new thing to think about. Otherwise you think same old, same old. So it's too, too good. <laughs> You can't hear, sorry? Uh, what makes us think that um, sex in Gita and uh, we conclude that medical people have been with Gita? Oh, all you have to do is read it and you can see that there are different people's voices. You just read the Gita chapter by chapter and see the the attitude of one chapter, whoever's writing it, is different from the attitude of the previous chapter and give different information. So it's self-contradiction, you see. All you have to do is study it with a, with a critique it. And you just see that in this chapter it says this, in another chapter it says the opposite. So which is right? You can't know which is right. But when Shri Baba tells you, Gyan, that gives you a key. And you can tell in any scripture, in any religion, which thing is true, which thing is not true. Because the scriptures are all written by human beings. On the basis of what they remember, of what Shri Baba told them in the Confluence Age. So they're writing it, you know, two and a half thousand years later. So it's amazing they can remember anything at all. But they do remember quite well. But it's confusing by the time you get to the end of the Iron Age because there's so much addition and subtraction and changing that goes on. So like the Quran, for example, it's not allowed, you can't translate it, it's got to be in Arabic and this and that. The Jewish Torah, you can't change a single full stop or comma. The Bible you can change, it's allowed. They've got lots of different translations and this version and that version and so on and so forth. But the Gita, you know, there's officially 14 different Gitas and then unofficially who knows how many. So anyway, you do your best. But um, one of the things that Baba asked the judges to do, all the BKs who were judges, there were two BKs who were sitting judges. And one of them is the sister that I work with, with doing videos. And so we did this set, series of videos called The Gita Decoded. And um, she was very interested in this because Baba had told the judges have to prove who is the God of the Gita. So she took it personally because she's a judge. And um, so I don't know if we proved or disproved anything, but we did our best. But this is the main thing that Baba wants to do is prove that he's not omnipresent, that Krishna is not the God of the Gita, Shri Baba is the God of the Gita, and the Gita is spoken at the confluence age, Shri Baba coming into the body of Brahma Baba and telling the knowledge which changes the world from the Iron Age to the Golden Age, that the Ganges is not the purifier but Shri Baba is the purifier. So all these points we're supposed to prove they're not easy because people have very strong beliefs and so you have to create doubt.
So all of you came in Gyan. How did you come in Gyan? Because when you heard it, you said, yeah, that sounds right. And then you have to study. And then you get more and more clarity by the study. And then you develop your yoga and everything. Om Shanti. I think we have to go in five minutes. <laughs> yeah, we'll have a moment of meditation. Commentary? Me? So first of all, go deep inside. And know yourself to be point of light. become very subtle, detach from your body, you are neither male nor female, you say I am Brahmin. following Baba Srimad. Forget all your people. Let go of everything and everyone. Forget the past. Everything is okay. You just go to Baba. Baba the point. You are the point. All the stories of drama merge into a point. And silence alone with Baba. You go into that point and you find yourself in the ocean of life. Let that light fill your being. Right from Baba. Take power from Baba. Fill yourself. Go deep as you can. Maybe also come back to the body, to the everyday world. Keep the power with you. Use it to handle situations. Mm -hmm. Can you can continue. Huh? You can continue. <laughs>